Your heart could break into a thousand pieces. Sarah Jo Adderson is not a happy camper. She is the newly minted producer of 1958's premier soap opera, Tomorrow is Forever. And everyone thinks the show is, well, let's just say it's not winning any awards. I remember each halcyon day. I'll still have you for tomorrow. And for all the tomorrows, Amy. For all of them. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's dress rehearsal. Halcyon days. Oh, good God, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> when Carolyn Lake turns on the waterworks, doesn't matter what she's saying. <sighs> but it is boring, Sid. Aren't you bored? Our employers like boring. They feel it sells soap. But Addie has a plan. Laurel Kessler is a playwright out to change the world, and she's about to have the job interview of her life. I wanted to thank you again, Mr. Costello, for this opportunity to write for your show. Oh, honey, I'm not, I'm not offering you a writing job. Oh, no, of course not. I realize there's a lot of competition, but just to be in the oh, running. Oh, no, honey, I, I wanted you to be my new secretary. You know, be the cheerful face that welcomes everyone here at the network. No, no. Mr. Costello, I'm an accomplished writer. I have 20 teleplays here. Uh, each one is different. Look, I wanted to show you... Um, yeah, Laurel, uh, stop. I can't hire a girl to be on my staff. I mean, you know better than that. Television is a business, honey, not a tea party. I know that. I'm not an idiot. Sorry. I shouldn't have said that. You need to watch your attitude, Laurel, honey. No one likes a pushy girl. Quite the charmer, isn't he? Meanwhile, back at the studio. Okay, kiddo, you're gonna have to tell me what that is. You've been clutching it to your bosom all morning. I put an ad in the trades for a new writer, Sid. This woman sent me a script and I've read it five times. It's perfect, I think it's just what we need. Mm -hmm. But? She's never written for soaps before. Ooh. Oh, she's fancy, Sid. She's won an Obie. The Times calls her provocative. Yeah, well, we're provocative. <laughs> In our own way. Uh, well, let me know when the Times writes about us. <laughs> I'm taking her to breakfast tomorrow. Wish me luck. Godspeed, boss. <laughs> Come on. Oh. And you're sure you're a, a television producer? Because I gotta tell you, a girl doing that, that's, that's a first for me. I produce the premiere show in daytime television, Tomorrow is Forever. Oh, a soap opera. That is what they're called, yes. And you want me to write a soap opera? Listen, I don't mean to be rude, but I, I can't write about amnesia and hysterical blindness. I'm terrible at writing gooey love stories. You see, I have things that I want to say. You know, I, I, I want to make a difference. I know you do. That's why I'm here. Because daytime television can say everything you want it to say. Oh. There's a show. It's called A Better Light. Now, the head writer was diagnosed with uterine cancer. And that got her to thinking, what about all the women at home who don't know anything about it, including that there's a test? Sure, the pap smear. Right. So, she had a beloved character on the show go get a pap smear and get a diagnosis. Oh, but boy, they said she had it? On air? Of course, nobody said uterus. I mean, God forbid. <laughs> no, you can't even say the word cancer on network. So, they actually ran that story? from test to treatment to a cure. Huh. And they got away with it. Because a better light is just a soap For the little ladies. Run by the little ladies. The boys in the offices don't care what stories we tell. As long as you sell the soap. So what happened then? Bushels of fan mail. <laughs> oh, Laurel, that story saved lives. And the boys in the office, they just let it happen. It really is a no man's land. Daytime television is the promised land. <laughs> Come with me. Let me show you the studio. All right. 
We have to work fast. We do a show a day. Primetime does one a week. And uh, don't ask about the budget, but I have talented people and they know how to work. Now that's Sid, he's our director. There's Carolyn Lake, our leading lady. It, is that Jessie Norris? I've seen her at La Mama, she's terrific. What role does she play? Uh, Sally, the housekeeper for the rich family. It's an under five. <laughs> a walk on for an actress like that. I guess the actress is nowhere to be found and Carolyn's about to pitch a fit, so any thoughts, boss? Oh, sh sh sugar. Well now, why would you bring an actress in when you have a dynamite talent right here. You mean Jessie? Sure, she's worked with Carolyn before. She's fantastic. Well, yes, but her character's just the housekeeper. So write Jessie a bigger part. She is worth taking a chance on. You trust me? He's leaving us for a better life. Who talks like that? Don't, Don't ask. ask. When this unlikely pair teams up, no one could predict how they would change history. Sally, I'm not even sure that I can go on. You don't get to give up. You can cry or scream or throw things at the wall, but you don't get to quit. Who the hell are you to tell me what I can or can't do? I'm your friend. Based on a true story. What'd you think about your first day? You know, I really liked it. I actually wish I could have done more. <laughs> That's the thing about soap is Laurel. There's always another one tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, as we clutch our pearls in tragedy. Okay, don't and push. And then it. we clutch our pearls in comedy. I heard you. And then we also clutch our pearls. Queens of Daytime. <laughs>